Hey, what's going on 3DMJers? This is Eric Helms, and uh, got a little bit of a Q&A for February, uh, maximizing your off-season metabolic potential. How's it going, guys? Um, so basically, one of the questions that we got that was a really good one uh, was, how can someone maximize their metabolic potential in the off-season, i.e. bringing up carbs slowly, week weekly to not gain fat, but how do you... Um, how do you figure out exactly the, the basically the rate that you should go at while not getting overly fat and also gaining uh, kind of the right amount that we want, say, you know, one to two pounds per month or right in there? Uh, great question. And I can tell you this, that pretty much any time I start with a uh, consultation with a client, um, when we're trying to do like a big picture plan or like a one-off, sit down, have a chat, figure out what we're going to do, the big thing that we need to work on almost always is determining either the rate of weight loss or weight gain that they need. Um, so that's, that's a topic in and of itself, and that's where pretty much your diet needs to start. Um, you know, figuring out what your maintenance calories are and thus where your, your, uh, your gaining or your, or, your, or your cutting calories need to be in relation to that. Um, and in the specific context of a bodybuilder transitioning from prep to the off-season, and doing what's called the reverse diet, where we try to get the metabolism back in place and then uh, you know, transition into the off-season fully, it all comes down to doing that without putting on too much body fat. So the reverse dieting process is just one of getting your food back up to where it can be. And, and that's exactly what the crux of this question is, is maximizing your metabolic potential. So, um, as you guys have probably heard Coach uh, Nunez talk about in his recent video on, on refeeds and high-carb days and how uh, he took a shot at my pathetic womanly metabolism, which I'm a little offended by, but I'm okay, uh, we're just going to transition right from there. So, yeah, you're going to have some high-carb days when you're dieting down, um, especially as you get leaner. Uh, the frequency, the size, and uh, the composition of those refeeds are going to be uh, different for people, but for the most part, it's pretty much going to be a high carb day that is pretty close to your off-season intake. Sometimes a little higher. Like for me, I you, I need pretty damn high high refeeds. But for most people, you're going to have a refeed that is relatively representative of what your off-season intake is as far as carbs. So what I like to do is use this um, refeed day as basically a target for the off-season, and I try to go through the diet for as long as possible during contest prep without touching that, uh, that, that kind of re that refeed day. I keep it pretty sacrosanct. I try to make most of the adjustments, especially at least the carbohydrates, on the six low days or the five low days or however many they have. But we keep that, that one refeed is basically where we try to get back to. So um, let's take a hypothetical example of someone who started the diet with six days at 200 grams of carbs and then one day at 450. Okay? Um, it's your pretty typical light heavyweight competitor with a moderately speeded metabolism, something like that. And um, they finish the diet, say around 150 uh, on, their, on their carbohydrate intake, and um, probably cardio is a little higher, and then we've ma managed to maintain that 400 gram uh, carb day once per week. Um, so the first thing I like to do is just get the person out of the deficit and into something a little more healthy. So I'll kick the fat. Um, up to somewhere around, you know, 20-25% of calories and kick those carbs probably back up to where I started them on the diet. So now we've got something reasonable, and this is just the low day adjustments. And from here, now you have to pay close attention to what your weight and your body composition does. Um, obviously, you don't want to try to stay shredded all year round, but you do want to stay as lean as your body will let you while still making gains, being hormonally healthy, and uh, being sane and not overly food focused. So, is some body fat going to come? Yes. Do you accept a little more body fat gain immediately after the show? That's fine, but we do want to get to a place where eventually we're, we're not putting on too much. Okay? So, what I like to do is make small increases, anywhere from as low as 5 grams of carbohydrates to as much as 25 grams of carbohydrates bumps to the low days. And I do this based on the change in weight. A good way to do it for you guys and gals watching this is take a seven-day running average of your weight, okay? And if it's going up, um, say, half a pound a week, then that's probably a little too fast, except maybe in the beginning of the reverse period. Um, you just need to figure out what is the rate that's appropriate. 
So the context of this question was, look, if I want to try to gain two pounds a month, well, okay. That means we're roughly gaining a quarter pound a week. Um, excuse me, half a pound a week. So uh, what you want to do is compare your seven-day running average, and if you're gaining, say, like 0 0.3 to 0 0.6, don't make any change to your diet. And if it falls below 0 0.3, add somewhere in the ballpark of 5 grams to 25 grams to your, to your carb intake. And if it's above you know, uh, 0.6 in, in a week, then you probably want to drop it down 5 grams to 25 grams, kind of scaled on what you're seeing. And basically, you just kind of auto-regulate your diet like this. Uh, you have it uh, changing based upon the way your weight is going, and then you don't have to worry too much about what your caloric expenditure is. You don't have to worry too much about uh, whether you go through periods where you train three days in a week or five days in a week. You just keep adjusting, so you, you're focusing more on the output than the input. That is, how quickly is my weight changing? Um, and then it's just a matter of finding the right macronutrient balance and all that. So to recap, basically, you get your refeed day to diet down. You go through contest prep. Ideally, you don't touch the refeed day very much. And then as you come out of the diet, you have the goal of trying to walk those, those six low days or five low days slowly up to where your refeeds are. Um, depending on you know, how much weight you lost and whether you were over fat before you started the diet, uh, you may find you can't get back up to where you were. Or if you were, um, let's say I inherited an athlete who was metabolically damaged, they might have been at a very suppressed caloric intake, and we can walk them back way past where their, their refeeds once first were and get them to a caloric level they've never been at. And that's ideal. So the goal here is basically just to keep making very slow, gradual, measured uh, increases in carbs um, until you get it as high as you possibly can. Um, it won't all be increasing carbs. In the case of someone who's going to walk their calories past where they've ever had them before, um, I would advise for the average kind of uh, competitor with a pretty normal metabolism, if your fat falls below 20% of calories, start bumping your fat uh, like every other increase and steady your carbs just so it doesn't become a really uh, low percentage of your calories. And, um, and that's it. Uh, protein, you probably want that somewhere around, say, like two, in between two to three grams per kilogram. Um, higher if you're leaner and closer to, to spin on stage and still rehabbing your metabolism, and lower if your body fat's a little higher.